Question. I was born with a certain temperament, a certain psychological and physical pattern. Whatever your reason for being, this pattern becomes the main actor of my life. Master me, absolutely. My freedom within the standard is very limited, since most of my reactions and impulses are rigidly predetermined. Can I break the tyranny of this genetic factor? Response. Expressing the same thing in another way, I am attached to a social, hereditary, environmental, ideological standard, whether the pattern of my parents or the society around me. I am rally for a pattern, and the question is to know how I can break. I am the result of my father and my mother, biologically, physically. I am the result of beliefs, habits, my parents' fears, who created the society that my parents, in turn, were the result of their parents, with their social, physical, and psychological environment. And so, retrospectively, infinitely, without beginning, all person is stuck within a standard of existence. And I am the result of all that past. Not only my own past, but the whole past of humanity. I am, am after all, the son of my father. I am the result of the past, modified in conjunction with the present oh. We are not inviting the question of reincarnation, which is a mere theory. We are just examining what it really is. My existence is the result of my past. My past being the result of my father's existence. I am a product of time. I am the past crossing the present to become the future. I am yesterday's result that is today. To become tomorrow. Now, can I get out of this time process? That is, can I break the pattern that my father and I created myself? I'm no different from my father. I am my modified father. This is exactly what it is. But if I begin to translate what it is, if I admit, for example, the idea that I am the soul, a spiritual entity, then penetrate in a totally different domain. It's not that that interests us for time. We will deal with this issue when we enter the problem concerning the soul, continuity, and reincarnation. The problem for now is, I can, that I'm conditioned. No matter if on the left or right, can I get out of this conditioning? What you condition you? What limits thinking? What creates the standard you are in? If I stop thinking, there is no standard. That is, I am the thinker. My, uh, I react to all new stimulus according to yesterday's standard. And can I, whose thought process is yesterday's result, stop thinking about yesterday? I'm just explaining the problem differently. And you will find the solution yourself in a minute. My thinking is conditioned. Because any reaction from the conditioned state creates more conditioning. Any action resulting from the conditioned state is conditioned action, which, therefore, it continues the conditioned state. Soon, so that we leave him, we need to be free of conditioning. Which means being free from the thinking process. But one should not understand that I am suggesting this as a means of escape. Most people seek to escape because life is very pressing to them, very strong, very demanding. And I'm not proposing any of these escapes. I am just asking you to look at the truth contained in the problem. Can you be free from the thinking process? Can a complete revolution occur in thinking? Not according to the old standard, which would still be a continuation of the old, with modified values, but a complete transformation, a total break of what it is. Since I am yesterday's product, freedom, of course, is not at the same level as I am, which is a mere continuation of yesterday. Therefore, I will only be able to get out of the standard when there is a cessation of thinking. We are just facing the problem and not seeking a solution. Because the solution is contained in the problem, not out of Ida. If you understand the problem, you will find the solution in IT. But when you are looking for a solution and you don't find it, you get disturbed. You are waiting for me to tell you how to get the standard A, and I won't tell you how to leave it. No meaning would have to say it, because in such a case, you would stop following the problem. You want me to tell you what you should do, so it's now very disturbed. And I don't tell you what you should do. Once it is enough to understand the problem for it to disappear, when you see a snake and you know it is poisonous, there is no problem. There is. You know how to proceed. You should not touch it. You should move away or do anything else. Identically, it is necessary to completely understand this problem. But you are not doing. 
I'm doing it in your place. And you are merely listening to me. We need to understand the problem. And he himself reveals the solution to you. You are like a high school in a test. He doesn't read the problem carefully. Want a solution and therefore fails. But if he reads the problem with all wonder carefully, considering it in all aspects, he will find the solution. Or before, the solution will be revealed by itself. Identically, you are facing this problem with the desire for a solution. And I think I do not realize the beauty contained in I. You are probably tired, gentlemen. Yes, gentlemen, you are tired. And I will tell you why. All of this is probably very young for you. Nor can it be. Because it is a new way of considering. They are a little disturbed, and when we are confused or disturbed, our mind breaks up all. I can continue. It is my task. But I did it. I don't just speak. While in your case, gentlemen, if you allow me to say, you are not studying the problem. I formulated him in different ways. But you don't want to follow you. I'm simply pointing out what it is the problem. But you are not interested in studying what it is. They are waiting for the result, while I have no interest in the result. I want to understand the thing as it is. So I found the solution. Allow me to ask you to study the problem and not seek a solution. Please see the importance it has. Seeking an answer, a solution does not mean understanding the problem. If you do not understand the problem, there will be no solution to it. The problem is here and you are looking for the solution there. Which means you want a convenient, flattering solution. But if you face the problem carefully and applying all your intelligence, you will then realize your beauty and the result is wonderful. The problem consists of the following, my thinking is conditioned, fixed on a standard, and to any stimulus, which is always new. My thinking can only react according to its conditioning, turning the new one into the old man, into something modified. That way, my thinking can never be free. My thinking, which is yesterday's product, is only able to react under the same conditions as yesterday. And when he wonders how I can go beyond, he is asking a wrong question. Because when thought tries to overcome its own conditioning, it continues itself in a modified way. Therefore, there, there is a falsehood in this question. There is only freedom when there is no conditioning. But in order for freedom, thought must be aware of his condition and not try to become different from what he is. If the thought says, oh, I need to break free from my conditioning, it will never make it because whatever it does is always its own prolonged or modified network. No doubt... Whenever thought is active, it is conditioned. It is continuity modified by a conditioned reaction. This way, we will not find any way out of our conditioning. Therefore, there is only one way, which is vertical, which is direct, which is the cease of thought. But can the thought cease? What is it thinking? What do we mean by thinking? I'm expressing myself very simply. I do not want to complicate the problem, which I already consider to be very complicated. Thinking is memory reaction. And what is memory? Memory is the result of the experience. This is when they present us with a stimulus, and therefore this stimulus is not understood perfectly, but interpreted through yesterday's curtain. Thus then, what is not understood leaves a trace to which we call memory. You no longer realize that when you understand something, when you run out of conversation, when it was over, there is no trace left. It is only the incomplete act, whether it is verbal or physical, which leaves tracing. The reaction of this trace, which is memory, is called to think. And can there be a state in which there is no yesterday? That is, there may be a state where there is no time, when there is no thought that yesterday's product is. Conditioning thinking that seeks to modify or transform itself, only the conditioned state continues. And this is very obvious. Thinking is memory reaction, which is also obvious. And memory is the product of imperfect understanding of experience, and is the cause of memory. When it does something in full, with all your being, there is no residue from memory. But when the waste produces the reaction, this reaction we call thinking, this thinking is conditioned, and this conditioning can only end when the act is complete. So face all things in a new way. And how can you face things in a new way? How to face life, existence, new, 
regardless of time? This is a new question, isn't it? It is the question that arises from the present question. When presenting this question, what is your reaction? If your reaction is also new, it is then passively conscious, alert, and vigilant. This state is... In this state that faces all things with passive vigilance perception, there is no time. A direct experience is given. The stimulus is directly understood. And therefore, there is freedom to think. And this freedom is eternal. It exists now and not tomorrow.